I, I, I don't think that's what God wants. I don't think He wants us coming complaining. David even said in the Old Covenant, He said, I will enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise, not courts with complaining. So my encouragement to you today is that you enjoy yourself, have fun. God is going to speak. He's going to deal with Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and false prophets in America that keep cursing the United States of America. Okay? So, it is a very special time for us because this is documented and then it goes throughout the earth and it goes on outside of Christian television into the internet where we have enemies that are watching. And remember when Elisha, and I'm not putting myself in a position of of anything but you know where in Elisha was able to tell where the enemy was to help the intelligence of Israel that day is uh, on us again um, I was involved in a project called um, Operation Prophecy which came about during President Bush's reign and uh, I was fortunate of one, one of them one, one of the props I don't know who the others were to tell them about the attack that was going to take place in, Lo in London on planes and they were able to stop that because of my prophetic insight. You can go and read about it. it was in the month of August a few years ago. And you can read about it. It's acknowledged. The only reason I'm telling you this is not to get a pat on my back. I don't need that. But to show you that God is taking prophets into another realm altogether. And the problem is we have a generation of people, the young people. There they are sitting there looking at us saying, is this all it's about? You're going to judge America and God's wrath on America? If, if there's been any judgment, it's, it's, it's happened already. I mean, America is not in the greatest place. So whatever is supposed to... I said the other day, why don't you just define what judgment is? Do you want a big earthquake to just swallow America up? Uh, what do you want? So a generation is looking and saying, okay, is there any good news for us? And we do actually carry some good news that God is still the God who triumphs. God is still the God who gives victory. God is still the God that gives hope to a generation. And when children are born, they are born with an expectation. That their fathers and their predecessors prepared a way for them like John the Baptist. And so we appreciate your prayers and your love. We I'm talking to everybody all over the world. We appreciate what your support. I'm going to Israel in a few days' time. It was something that God put on my heart to do. And I want you to pray for me and support us as we go there. I've got some big things I have to do. But presently I have a word in my spirit regarding this that God wants to speak about. And how he's going to defend the United States of America. Now, if somebody out there says, well, you just, you're just saying good words. You know, I was thinking about it. If we, have, if we have darkness, there has to be light. If we have words that are negative, then they have to be words of positive. So I, I, I'm not saying I won't. Uh, there won't be times that I'll prophesy, you know, um, earthquakes or things. I've done that. But you know what? We've got to get away from this old superstitious way of thinking. And that every time there's an earthquake, oh, God's dealing with us now. And we've got to be careful of that. So I invite you to join us and uh, to pray. Um, I want you to come here, please. Yes. Yeah, come here. Come stand over here. See, we have a, a generation of young people that really want an anointing. I mean a true... Not an angry anointing, not, a, not an angry anointing, but an anointing where they can take something to a generation, whether it's through the arts or whether it's through music or sport, whatever it is. And that's their, God will lead them that way. So I prophesy to you today that as this touches your shoulders, you would understand that the Lord has not sent a prophet to anoint a young man for nothing. There will always be something that will transpire the very night that he lays his hands upon a young man or woman. This day, this prophet declares that you will be involved in a, in a tapestry of events that will be colorful, that will be animated, that will cause many to say we are drawn to you and we don't know why. That is being put upon you now because what they are being drawn to is Jesus in you. There are heavenly beings that are drawn to you because of Jesus' light that is in you. 
So your mind shall be cleared. You shall speak clearly and you shall understand and not be confused. For I've chosen you as a prophet to this generation, says the Lord. Come on. Is that fun? Come here. Come on, let's pray. I know it's a little different, but I've got to prepare myself for prophecy. You know, God spoke about the double portion. And, the, and, and God is giving double portions out. We get tired of cliches sometimes. Oh, I've heard about the double portion. But there are seasons where there's a double portion. There are moments in time where there's a double portion given to people. And when it is, it is to be taken care of. My question is, is your question. Where is the God of Elijah? Elijah? Where is the God of Ruth? Where is the God of Esther? That same God is in existence and has taken insult to those who would represent him incorrectly. You smile when I talk of America. You smile when God speaks of good news to that nation, to this nation. So I will anoint you as well to have a part in the solution of many that are involved in an organization and organizations that are, are, are prejudiced where you will have the ability to say, I have come as a messenger of the Lord. I have come to give you good news. I have come to show you light in a dark place. And so I put this upon you and I send you because there is a double portion that is set upon you right now. Come on, let's praise Him. God's Spirit is drawing nearer to us now. Come on. Something very special happening throughout the earth. Just pray out for wherever you are. Pray for this nation. Pray for Israel. Pray for your nation. Pray for Ecclesia, the thing that Jesus cherishes most of all. Pray, pray, pray. For God has not finished with this nation yet. God has not given up on this nation yet. God has spoken. Why are there so many that would curse this nation? Where do you find it in my word? Who is persecuting my church? Who is it that is slandering my church? Who is it that is beheading my people? It is not America. But as you, have you looked at Islam? And have you noticed, says Lord, that the wickedness that they have presented, the wickedness that Saudi Arabia has given to the world is Islam in Mecca and oil. And they have said, we will control the United States. We will control the world. But God says, look at Saudi Arabia. Look carefully, for there is great wickedness brewing from there. And as they plan, says the Lord, as they plan, I want you to understand something. While they are planning for the destruction of America, there are those in this nation that call themselves prophets, that are constantly speaking against this nation. There are those who call themselves prophets that speak with Islam against this nation. There are Christian prophets that have joined forces in a very strange way to curse this nation. Why have you betrayed me, says the Lord? This is where my church is being built up. This is where bread is being sent to the world. And this is not the place where my church is persecuted. Not much. But God said, if you would watch, Saudi Arabia is hiding something. And they will be caught with their pants down, says the Lord. They will be caught, says the Lord. Netanyahu, listen to me, Netanyahu. You are afraid of what is happening in Iran. Forget that for a minute. Look to other countries. For Russia has already made a decision. This prophet was caught up and saw the table that they have stood at. This prophet has heard how this dog that is from a junkyard is about to be released and how he will bite viciously. But his attack shall not only be with Iran, but it shall come against Saudi Arabia. But the Lord says, do not worry, because while these cats and dogs are fighting, America shall begin to bloom. America shall begin to prosper. America shall bring oil. America 
you shall bring oil. America shall suddenly see a massive influx of new ideas and creativity. A new energy is coming and it's coming soon, says the Lord. A new energy is coming and it's coming soon. Are you listening to me, says the Spirit of God? And you say, what about this president? You say, what about this president? Did you understand that in the scriptures, when a king did not deal with the people that were his enemies, and if the king and the president does not deal with the enemies of God, who is it that I raise up? When Samuel told Saul, you are to kill the Amalekites, every one of them. King Saul spared them. You cannot spare them, Obama. You cannot spare them. They are not spareable. Because God said when the king did not do it, he raised up a prophet who would then overtake them. God says the prophetic anointing upon this generation shall slice down the enemies and America shall enter into a seven year of prosperity says the Lord come on you may say what does this have to do with me you may say what has this have to do with me you have heard prophets shouting from the left and the right. We have on good uh, information that America shall collapse and it shall be wiped out. God said, not while I'm alive and I happen not to be dying very soon. I died once on a cross. I die no more. I die no more, says the Lord. Don't you tell me what my plans are. Why have you? Put, why is there a lying spirit in your mouths, O prophets? Why is it that you curse along with ISIS and Islam, the nation that has brought bread and brought oil and brought life and being taken the captives into their borders? What about that, says the Lord? Where is your justice? Where is your righteousness? Where is your equity? Oh, God says, I will show you that I will raise out of the dust of this nation. The dust I will raise young men and women who shall take over and take charge, says the Lord. Come on. Come on. All of you standing, what? All of you watching me all over the world, raise up your hands. We're going to pray a prayer for the nation. So what is the stench? What is the stench that I'm hearing? Hear the prophet today. What is the stench that I'm smelling? What is it? What I am smelling is betrayal. The spirit of Ju Ju Judas and the, and the spirit of Joseph standing together. Judas to take away one, but Joseph, which means to add. And the Lord will add. What am I saying? ISIS is a problem, but it's not the only problem. They have made a plan to enter the schools of America. No, 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 this is a long-term plan. They will enter in and they shall send young men and women and they shall intermarry and they shall raise up families that shall stand and attempt in the second presidency from now. And they shall be called another name then they shall attempt to do something in the White House. They have watched all your movies, how the White House has been taken down. And they have dreamed their dreams. And I have sat and I have watched. And I have left because uh, it is true that they can possibly cripple America for a season. And they did. But they will never touch Israel. For you see, Israel has my supernatural protection. Israel has my supernatural protection. But the Spirit of God says, may I ask you a question? May I pose something to you? What do I hear? I hear the sounds of young men, young children saying, Yeshua, 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 Yeshua. From the north to the south, from the east to the west, from the middle of the country on the mountains and the hills, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. Yeshua, but it goes a little bit further into the heart of Iran and into the heart of Pakistan, into the heart of ISIS. Yeshua, 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 Yeshua. Everybody all over the world, I want you to say his name out loud. Come on. To Iran, 
Yeshua, 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 Yeshua. Now you ask, do you really think you're going to take me out of the hearts of the young man and woman? Do you really think that I'm going to move away just because of ISIS? Do you really think that I'm going to move away just because of Islam? No, I have a church that I'm building and the gates of hell will not prevail against me. Yeshua, Yeshua, say it, Yeshua, 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 Yeshua. did the prophet just say to you? May I pose a question? Can the borders of Iran, Pakistan, can the borders of Iraq, Saudi Arabia, can they stop Yeshua? No. Now hear me out, says the Lord. Mecca how they have been fooled and cursed that cursed stone which shall be unraveled and broken in pieces and I speak boldly today from this platform but respectfully Saudi Arabia you kept the oil you tried to deal with Russia God says you did the wrong thing for when you touch my church can my ecclesia be destroyed never yes we know there will be tribulation and so it shall be and my people shall join me but before that time there is a global awakening no no not just one town and city not just one country but many Look how I invaded Egypt. You see, most people don't know this, but it was in Arabia that John the Baptist was beheaded. And it is in Arabia and Saudi Arabia shall and has persecuted more Christians than you realize. But God, I said, I will now make them accountable. How shall I do this? I will prosper the very country that they hate, calling them the great Satan. New energy is arising. And God says, even though oil shall always be fought after, there shall be burning and burning and burning like you have never seen. And there shall be fights and antagonism. But I cannot, unfortunately, do it now, as I'm stuck with one who has decided not to fight Islam, not to fight radical Islam, but God said, I will cause a new one to rise up in this nation. Yeah. And God said, there will be a prophetic anointing that shall carry you until that year. And that prophetic anointing, says the Lord, will bring prosperity to the soil of this country and to the families of this nation. Yes, they have sinned. America is not guiltless. But God said, when I weigh the balance, when I weigh the scales, when I set out the scales, there is great iniquity in Saudi Arabia and all over that region and therefore watch with your eyes as the earth shakes and watch how this prosperity comes for now I set the prophetic seal upon my house and upon my church to prosper and prosper and prosper even more says the Lord of hosts. very very powerful day night I know many of you watching all over the world have suddenly been drawn into a whole new episode yeah. of prophetic utterance I'm not saying I'm better than any other prophet the prophets are now focusing God said there will be an intermingling marrying terrorism ISIS coming into the country luring the girls and the, and the young men 
God said, I told you about the Damascus Road experience. I told you I'm not going to sit back. If I did it then, I will do it now again. As they are attempting to persecute my church, whom I am building. That's what he says. So I shall once again appear. Blindness shall come. Scales on eyes. And the voice shall say, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. That day is upon us. But I just heard something, and I know that you watching all over the world just heard it with me. You just heard from this den, God's prophet laying out a plan, entering into a new era of energy. America, listen, fracking and whatever you call it is going to take place. There is going to be a great supply of oil. And God spoke this. Yes, many would say, but it's time for America to end now. You would agree with Islam and the, Ameri uh, the, Ameri uh, the, the terrorist organizations, would you? When you just heard the heart of God. Everyone watching me right now, did you hear God said, there are two things that are, are present. The spirit of Judas, which is betrayal to its own nation and to its own people and to its own Messiah. And then there is a spirit of Joseph that has been released. Now you can be a part of this. Joseph means and the Lord will add. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for God to add. I said, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for God to add. Before I do anything else, this drew it out of me. I've been in all week. I've been, I've been carrying this. And now, and I was carried above the, uh, I was carried above a, a, a table with Putin and, and four others. I did. I saw them writing things which I am not permitted to speak now. Otherwise, I won't be alive next week. I am not permitted to speak this now, but there will come a point when I can share it with the right authorities. And I will do it. And I will do it as I go to Israel. That is my duty. That is what he called me to do. But now everyone watching me, I want every one of you to listen. When God speaks and his presence is so strong, it is fitting and right for us to sow and to give while the presence of the Lord is so prevalent and powerful. It is, it is God's presence that receives your offering. It is God's voice that receives your offering. It's God's promise that receives it and then brings it straight back to you. If you want what was just spoken, which means that God has planned a realm of prosperity, whether it's social, whether it's whatever it is, physical or mental or family relationships or whatever it is, you have the opportunity to say, I'm going to sow into the spirit of Joseph that is present because I want God to add to me now. I don't want anything taken away. I don't want anything removed by the spirit of Judas. I want something added to me and my house today and my business so that I can enter into my new year with freedom. It's just great to be an American. trust and confidence in the plowing and the prayers and the blood of our forefathers that this country will not go down to hell I just have that confidence and as an outsider coming in I want you to know I I love this nation and I will and that's I think why God put it in my heart to to be a prophet uh, to America because um, I, you know I just that not because I love America that I bless that I hear from God yeah, believe me I prophesied the um, 
the um, hurricane in um, New Orleans long before, just before it happened. It wasn't even a sign of rain and spoke about the bodies that would come up and everything. I'm not boasting, I'm saying there, are, there have been times when I've, when I've spoken out when enough is enough. But God's not angry all the time, people. He's just not angry. He has a severe love for His people and a mercy. And what's happening in the country with the racial issue is really, really bad. And we need to be praying. I went to Ferguson, stood right there in that very street where they were demonstrating. They, we saw the demonstrations. We filmed some of it. Put my boots on the ground, gathered people together. We had a thousand something people and we had a huge prayer meeting. Not just for Ferguson, but because of what I see happening. You know, and whether we believe who we believe doesn't matter. It's, it's the instigation of an enemy that we know has been around for a long time. And I believe when that happens, now let me tell you this. While you're giving, I'm just going to share this with you. I said this on Wednesday, but I shared quickly. Elijah, Elijah runs away from Jezebel because, listen to me, he had done amazing things. You know what he did? He brought the abundance of rain and he stopped the famine in the land. And he ran. He ran from a spirit that was not of God. She had killed the prophets of Baal. And instead of looking forward, he looked backwards and said, take my life for I'm no better than my forefathers. And when you start doing that and you don't get a glimpse of the future, that's when you lose it. But God says something very strange to him. God says, what are you doing here? Because he's in the wrong place. He's out of alignment. And of course, Elijah just goes off and tells what's wrong. He, he tells something that is no longer happening. I've been zealous. The people have rejected your covenant. Well, they fixed that up on the Mount of Carmel. So he's going way back. He's very discouraged. And he said, I'm the only one that's left. Well, that's not true. And then the Lord said to him, go back the way you came. And then go to the desert of Damascus. And when you get the anoint Haziel, Hazael, Hazael, the king over Syria. And I'm going to compare that a little bit with you now to what's happening today. Also go ahead and anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, the king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, from Abel Machola to succeed you as prophet. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the qualifications for a double portion are to start or to be found in the field of Abel Machola. You know what Abel Machola means? The meadow of dancing, the field of rejoicing. You want a prophetic word, you want a double portion, you want to start a journey to a higher place, you stay in the field of rejoicing. Paul says rejoice evermore. And he says something very strange, God. He says, Jehu will put to death anyone who escapes the sword of Hasiel, who is the king of Syria. And if anybody escapes Jehu, who is the king of Israel, who's going to take care of them? Elisha will put to death. Hold on, Elisha's not a king. Elisha's a prophet. But what he's saying is when they cannot do it, then Elisha will do it. You cannot remove the presence and the importance of a prophetic voice in a nation. When you do that, what happened to the tribe of, J of, of Israel, the, the brothers, when they took Joseph, who was the prophetic voice amongst the brothers, who was dreaming of the future, and when they took him and they put him into a pit, and when they sold him to the Ishmaelites, what happened to Israel? Israel went from being princes to being slaves. When you, when you just destroy or you remove the prophetic from your church, from your business, from your family, you will go from prosperity being princes to becoming slaves. And that's why Jezebel had almost won it. And that's why in this nation, so many are against the prophets. It's, you know who it is. It's the spirit. It's Lucifer. It's the enemy. That's who's doing it. You have no idea. We get threats. We get all kinds of things because of my strong voice for this nation and for God's people and for Israel where God has signed his name on that land.
That's why I go to help to preserve the land because that piece of land God put his signature on. When kings do not do their duty, then the prophet is who God relies on. Samuel, I told you, and I'm almost done, told Saul, King Saul, kill the Amalekites because God wants to repay them for what they did when Israel was in the wilderness. King Saul does what? He spares the Amalekites, the king and the best of their sheep, their cattle. When Samuel gets on the scene, Samuel says to him, what have you done? Well, I have I've done the Lord's command. Then why am I hearing the sounds of sheep and cattle? And there is a king that you have spared. Oh, I've done what the Lord wanted, but I spared the best. And Samuel says, you have been removed from this kingdom. You no longer have the power anymore. He remained king, but he had no authority. And Samuel went and killed the king of Amalek. Samuel the prophet. I'm only telling you this because when I did a study on... that Hazael who was going to be anointed as the king of Syria actually was a wicked man so why did God say to Elijah I want you to anoint king um, as the king of Syria Haziel was God behind him well God told him to do it you know sometimes we don't understand why there are people in power that may have certain traits and weaknesses that spare the enemies and we say why did god but god had a reason god has a reason for everything and when when the king of syria not haziel haziel worked for king ben adad ben adad was sick and he he sent haziel to J, to um elisha saying will he live and elisha says yes he will live and he says but he'll actually die Think about that. Because he knows that Haziel is going to tell him one thing and not the other, but he's going to do the other. So Haziel looks at Elisha, I'm almost done, and he, Elisha begins to weep uncontrollably. And as Haziel begins to get embarrassed because Elisha is weeping. And Elisha, he says to Elisha, why are, you, why are you weeping? What's wrong? And he says to him, I can see what you are going to do the horrible things that you will do to the people of israel you will kill the young men you will dash the little ones against the rocks and rip open the pregnant woman god said go and anoint haziel i know that's a question in your mind when there's a, a ruler that is wicked i'm not saying i'm not speaking specifically about this president in case you're thinking that i'm not saying he's wicked at all but there's been a heck of a lot of compromise and there are enemies that are laughing at us. And we have to know that the prophetic anointing will cover that. That's what it says. So what's happening here is way bigger than we realize. So he says that to Haziel and Haziel leaves thinking, ah, oh, stupid old man. But when Haziel gets back to the king, the king says, what did he say? He said, he said, he said well, he said, you're going to live. And then as the king's lying down, he takes a wet blanket and smothers him to death. And that's how Haziel becomes the king. I want you to know that when I read that, I realized the prophet and the king have to be together. In other words, they have to influence each other. Now, I know George Bush did crazy things too, but there was one thing that he did do. He opened his door to the prophet. He opened his door to me to speak. Now, I didn't always get uh, the words across didn't always convince him of what I thought but we had a good channel and that happened and I'm praying that this following president whoever comes in will open his heart to the prophetic 
because I'm telling you a nation cannot exist without it. And I'm not trying to put myself in position. I'm talking about all the good, powerful prophets out there. 